We've got two kips. ASD, we're going to use uh, wind governing lateral forces here today. I've done seismic in the past because I'm in seismic country, but hey, we got to mix it up because the wind blows everywhere in the world. So it's applicable more so to everybody. We have our studs, specific gravity of 0 0.4. So we're going to need to watch that. Um, we're going to need to adjust moving forward here. You'll see that. We're using structural one sheathing today, single sided wall, unblocked, obviously, because that's our design example. Studs 60 inches on center and designed per the Spidwiz 2015 edition. The 2021 is out. I said this in my previous video. I just haven't gotten my hands on that one yet. So there is a more current design code out there. But this design example should follow in the footsteps uh, of the updated code. Well, what first, like our perforated shear wall design, if you don't know about that, then check out my channel, previous video. Are we permitted to use an unblocked shear wall for our application? There are a couple of things we need to make sure that we are hitting in order to be able to use the system, not just prove engineering wise that it works. There are guidelines that we need to meet as well. They're as follows. Nails installed per table 4332. I'll have that up here in a moment. We'll go through it. Uh, your capacity needs to be calculated for your unblocked shear wall using equation 4.3-2 in the SpidWiz. Uh, we'll be using that today, obviously. Uh, the height of your wall needs to be less than or equal to 16 feet, so they cap how tall your wall gets to be for an unblocked condition. We have a 10-foot wall today, so we meet that criteria right off the rip ski. So bang, just like that. And then uh, V sub B, uh, uh, design coefficient to be used. Again, you'll see what that coefficient is within the equation that uh, gets called out up here. But they say this literature is, is listed in the SpidWiz. Um, I've just kind of summarized it into this table here. So, so we'll be checking off those things as we move forward here. Next thing we got to do, check our aspect ratio, make sure we're within our limits for our unblocked condition. So let's check it out. You'll find it in the table here. I snipped it from the SpidWiz this time. We are doing wood structural panels. That was uh, criteria provided, structural one sheathing, so structural panels, and unblocked. So our maximum ratio is a two to one. We have a footnote down below, always check our footnotes, uh, but it's, it's footnote one, which only applies to here and here, so it's not applicable to us here today, so we're clear. Let's check against the two to one maximum. When doing a lot of shear walls uh, for a standard wood building, uh, a way that I like to keep my calculations clean is to designate each one of the shear walls with a, you know, uh, a, a numbering system or a tracking system. So one through 20 or A through Z or a combination thereof. So for today, I'll say this is shear wall number one. I'll flag it there. And what then I like to do is mess around with the, uh, the variables. So they specify H over BS, H being your height, BS being the length of your shear wall, but we're checking shear wall one. So I would say H1 over B1 equals 10 feet over seven feet. That gets us 1.43 as our ratio, which is less than 2.0. So we are within the ratio limits. So we are okay to continue designing an unblocked shear wall for the condition that we have. So that's fantastic. If you remember in the perforated wall example, there was an additional, ugh, I can't talk today. There's an additional check that you had to do with the aspect ratio saying, hey, if you if your segment of wall exceeded a two to one limit, this is when we were doing a blocked shear wall, which permitted a, a 3.5 to one limit. But uh, the SpidWiz says, all right, but if you exceeded a two to one limit, you needed to, uh, use an equation that adjusted your effective length of your of your panel that you get to use in your calculations moving forward. Uh, technically, that's still applicable for unblocked shear walls, but it's already baked in to the procedure here because that equation comes into effect when your shear wall exceeds a ratio of two to one. However, this table here already caps unblocked conditions at two to one, so you could never be greater than a two to one. So then you would never be able to use that equation because you're, are, you're always under it. Next, let's talk about our capacity equation. This is 4.3-2. Again, a snip straight from the SpidWiz. So it's VUB equals V sub B times C sub UB. And they keep it nice and clean here. It's nothing too complex. They, they define each one of those variables. So VUB, your nominal shear capacity in PLF for unblocked. CUB, 
is going to be uh, an adjustment factor based on table 4332. Let's go up quickly. So in our checks, we need to use capacity per equation 432, which we were just looking at. So, yep, we're going to use that. And it says you need to use um, an adjustment factor based on the nailing per table 4332. So we're going to be applying that in order to uh, satisfy the equation of 43-2. So great, we can check that off. And then V sub B, uh, we'll continue to move forward with that. But I just want to keep everybody aligned here. Well, first, let's get V sub B. V sub B is our nominal unit shear capacity uh, in PLF from table 4.3a. Uh, I'm going to pop that up here in a second. You'll be very familiar with it. It's just the capacities table for your uh, for your shear wall. And uh, you go through the table and figure out what capacity you have based on the type of shear wall that you are using. But the little caveat with unblocked is that you need to use a predetermined wall type. So get the unit shear capacity from table 43A for wood structural panel blocked shear walls. Blocked. Blocked. Uh, with studs at 24 inches on center and a nailing, uh, edge nailing distance of 6 inches on center. Okay. So you need to go get that capacity. Even though we're doing unblocked. Because what was going to happen here is that table, the 43A, is blocked shear wall conditions. So you're going to grab that value and then they apply these uh, adjustment factors in order to reduce the capacity to get you to an unblocked condition. All right, 43A, we all know it, we all love it. We're doing wood structural panels. Let's do, you still want to specify your sheathing type. So let's use a 15, 30 seconds, 10 D nails, and we are wind controlled. And they said, all right, grab a six inch edge nailing condition. So six inches. So that shoots us over here and then shoots us down here and gets us that. So a, uh, a V sub B equal to 950 PLF. Let's remember uh, if you're using a specific gravity of wood framing of uh, with a G equal to 0 0.5, then this is done and you can take this value back. But I gave you a little twist just to keep you on your toes. We have a specific gravity of 0 0.4, which means you always read your footnotes. Bye. Right there. Footnote one is uh, variables based on if you're analyzing using LRFD or ASD. We'll specify that in a moment. Number two is a permitted capacity increase up to 15, 30 seconds if you were a lesser sheathing. However, we are already 15 to 30 seconds, so that, that doesn't apply to us. Number three, your specific gravity um, for your framing, other than Doug fir or Southern Pines, because both of those are 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You use this equation down here. So uh, one, we're just gonna do it on the fly. One, 0 0.5 minus G, which is 0 0.4. That gets you 0 0.1, which gets you an adjusted, uh, a little kind of side adjustment factor of 0 0.9. So your adjusted V sub B is 90% of that, which comes out to 855 PLF as your V sub B. All right, that value will take back. And then the rest of these uh, do not apply for us here today, but always read through all of them. Something that confused me that I want to point out to you is that although we have a stud spacing specified of 16 inches on center for our problem and our wall type, that doesn't change the fact of the value that you grab here. Because what happens that you'll see is the stud spacing that we have and the nailing spacing that we have adjusts the VB value once we determine our CUB value. So it just because we have 16 inch studs doesn't mean that it's like, wait, what does this mean now? I don't have 24 inches on center. Does that mean I always need to do 24 inches on center for unblocked? No, it's just take this value uh, as the same thing always, depending on your sheathing type. And then from there, we will tweak it afterwards with the other variables. With that, let's find CUB. We find ourselves table four, three, three, two. That was one another the last, I think, requirement above. Um, so we are using this, so everything checks out. 
we know that for right now, uh, the default that we picked was six inches on center edge nailing, and then 12 inch on center field is, is a common assembly. So we're six edge. Uh, field nailing is the same thing as intermediate nailing, 12 inches. And our stud spacing, like I was just mentioning, we land at 16 inches on center. So that's gonna land us a C UB factor of 0 0.6. Now, if we finish off the equation, VUB equals VB, we adjusted it with our specific gravity, so 855 PLF times CUB of 0 0.6 spits out 513 PLF. All right, lovely. That's nominal. And now we need to apply um, additional factors depending if we were ASD or LRFD. Let's all remember phi equals 0 0.8. You multiply by phi when you're getting it into LRFD capacity or you divide by what I'll call omega. I never quite know what specifically that's called, which equals 2.0 and you divide that in order to get an ASD value. Today, I specified wind as um, an ASD demand. So that's gonna be us here as well. VUB over omega. Just divide that by two. That gets you 256 PLF. That is the capacity of your unblocked shear wall. Let's check it against the demand. Well, V, what I call required, when that's the demand side, when I do ASD. But some people call other things I've been taught to call it that, so I do. Uh, equals 2,000 pounds or two kips, and the wall is seven feet long. So I'm gonna I'm gonna break it down into a PLF to compare it. That spits out 286 PLF as a demand. Well, V required is greater than VUB over omega. So we are no good today. We would need to make some types of modifications in order to bring up the strength uh, of our shear wall in order to make this pencil out and, and code compliant. But what can we do? Let's, let's take a look. Let's think about this. Well, off the top of my head, this is what I come up with. We can increase the stud uh, specific gravity uh, to 0 0.5. And in order to do that, you need to change the species of studs that you're using for your shear wall. Uh, I'm in the Pacific Northwest, so very, very common building material is dug for larch, which is specific gravity of 0 0.5. So we could switch out the stud framing to that, um, which takes out that 0 0.9 uh, reduction in our, v, uh, in our VB. So that instead of 855, that keeps us at 950 PLF from the table. Going through the equation, that gets us a final capacity of 285 PLF. So that would get us there. We can increase the shear wall length from seven feet to eight feet. More shear wall length means more capacity. Or the way that I said it here is more shear wall length equals uh, a lower demand per lineal foot because you have more feet of wall to divide your demand by. Uh, so that brings the PLF demand down to 250. So that gets us in, in the area. So that's a, a possibility as well. Each one of these is an option that can be done independently. They don't all need to be done together. Um, or the last one, we can increase the field nailing spacing to six inches on center instead of 12 inches on center, which is kind of customary. And that changes your CUB to 0 0.8 from 0 0.6. So that jacks up your capacity side as well to 342, which also achieves it. Let's take a look at that last one quickly. We're at our table, I'll go blue. So now we're six and we're six and our stud spacing is 16 inches on center. So now we're, there you go, 0 0.8 from 0 0.6. So what is that? Eight over six. That's a 33% increase in capacity right there. So a huge, huge bump. So beneficial. There's there's a bunch of different ways that you can play around with this, which is kind of kind of neat, kind of fun. Wood is already on the lower end when comparing structural materials, steel, concrete, wood, masonry. Wood's the little guy. Um, it's not meant for massive structures or massive demands. And then when you take it a step further and you do really the quote unquote, the flimsiest type of shear wall and unblocked shear wall, your capacity is very low. So it's not meant for insane <laughs> demands or insane conditions that are gonna see a lot of load. So just remember that. You as the engineer, let's think about this. You don't wanna just over-design everything. 
uh, if you have a condition where you have a lightly loaded structure, this could be completely applicable to you. Don't just think you all, always need to do blocked and double-sided shear walls and crazy big hold downs, all this stuff, because you want to make sure that it's extra strong. Being have a structure that has so much additional capacity doesn't mean that you've engineered a better building. It means that it's it's incredibly over-designed. It might be way more expensive because of that, and it's being designed for loading that it's it's never going to see in its lifespan. So is that really economical? Is it beneficial to all parties involved? Um, no, it's not. So bulking up as a structural engineer doesn't always mean that that's a good thing. Just as much, you always need to make sure that you are code compliant. So there we are today. A little spit and a little philosophy, I guess, um, towards you, but that's it. Uh, this is Rich with Team Kesteva. We're approaching 20,000 team members, subscribers. If you want to jump on that, bandwagon i guess or be just that committed team member hey consider subscribing share this information with other engineers pick out my faults let me know in the comments down below if i've done something wrong have i have i've done something different or that's not clear let me know let me know all right i don't know it all i'm learning every step of the way just like you are all right peace